to order. We would like to recognize our uh, distinguished colleagues uh, who are here with us today, joining us uh, virtually present. Um, Senators uh, Jaime Marcos and of course our uh, Senate President Pro Temp, Senator uh, Lodi Ralph Recto. Thank you uh, for uh, joining us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, Senate President. Thank you for uh, being with us. Before we continue, may I just uh, ask our uh, committee secretariat uh, to uh, recognize our uh, resource persons present here today. Thank you, Mr. Chair. From the Philippine Association of State Universities and Colleges, Dr. Tirso Ronquillo, President. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Dr. Ramon M. Docto, President, Palawan State University. Dr. Ronilio C. Apas, Senior President, Iligan City Polytechnic State College. Dr. Rosain A. Ancheta, Jr., President, Cebu Technical Technological University. Dr. Orduha G. Alvarado, President, Cagayan State University. Good morning, ma'am. Morning, sir. Dr. Pascualito B. Gatan, Vice President for Branches and Campuses. Polytechnic University of the Philippines. Dr. Emmanuel C. De Guzman, Vice President for Academic Affairs. Dr. Cherry Ibanez Ultra, President, University of Eastern Philippines. Good morning, po, President. Dr. Pascualito Vigatan for POP. Dr. Attorney Christian Bacos, Acting President, Consolation Community College. Good morning, sir. Attorney Los Muminda C. Rosales, Vice President for Administration and Finance. Batangas State University. Dr. Tirso Ronquillo, President, Batangas State University. Good morning, po. Good morning, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Comsec. Um, <clears throat> this juncture, let me uh, just give a short opening statement before we uh, uh, we start the ball rolling. Maganda at mapagpalang uh, umaga po sa ating lahat. Happy National Teachers Month na rin uh, sa ating uh, maraming guro na kasama natin ngayon at nakasubaybay sa atin uh, via Facebook Live. Um, sa ating mga kasamahan sa Senado, mga kasamahan sa Kongreso, magandang umaga po. Kung online learning po ito, I'm sure na mataas ang makukuha nating point sa attendance dahil nandito po pala halos lahat ng Mga concerned SUC presidents led by our PASOK president, Dr. Tirso Ronquillo, sir. At mga Monica. representatives natin sa Kamara de Representantes na may akda na mga panukalang batas na ito. Hindi ko na po kayo iisa-isahin pero kinikilala po natin ang inyong presensya uh, lalo na ngayong araw pong ito. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pagdalo para tulungan ang ating committee para suriin ang 28 House Bills. at sampung Senate bills na nakasala ngayon dito sa ating komite. Alam po natin kung gaano kahalaga ang mga bills na ito sa inyo at sa ating mga constituents. Kapag uh, naging batas po ang mga ito, ngayong may pandemya, isa po ito sa pwedeng paghugutan ng uh, pag-asa ng ating mga kababayan sa local levels. I think you will all agree with me. Um, since last year, sinasabi po natin that flexible learning is here to stay and it will be the new norm in higher education. For this reason, I hope that the bills revising the charters of Batangas State University and the Tarlac State University, we can 
put technology at the heart of their transformation. If our SUCs can fully embrace technology, especially digital technology, substantial positive change will also happen in our society. I-share ko lang po na marami siyempre ang nagtatanong, especially from education stakeholders, on the timelineness of these measures. Halimbawa, ito po bang conversion and establishment of physical campuses and CHED provincial offices? Kailangan po ba talaga ito ngayon when all our classes are done remotely or online? Just last week, UNICEF said that by the end of September, the Philippines would be one of the only two countries in the world that have not reopened schools since the pandemic. Um, Pilipinas po yan at Venezuela. Hindi lang po ito sa basic education, kundi maging sa higher education, although CHED already has already allowed limited face-to-face -face classes in 93 universities. Pero kahit sarado po ang karamihan sa ating mga pamantasan, tuloy-tuloy naman po ang flexible learning modality. Ang isang mas malaking problema natin ay yung series of cancellation ng board exams. Pati po yung physician board examination po pala this September ay nakancel na rin dito po sa NCR. Kailangan-kailangan pa naman natin ng mga doktor ngayon. This is an illustration po na kapag hindi tayo sumabay sa new norm, halimbawa sa computerization ng board exams, puro cancellation po talaga ang mangyayari. Under the PRC Modernization Law, 2003 pa po ang deadline na ibinigay sa PRC for full computerization of licensure examinations. Now, having said that, ang sagot ko po doon sa mga nagtatanong kung dapat bang gawin ang mga conversion at establishment ng campuses ngayong may pandemya ay ito. Napapanahon po. Kailangan po. Two reasons. Uh, pagbigyan niyo po ako, may kling may kling na lang. One, these legislations can serve as triggers for our HEIs to take a step higher, increase the number of seats in our SUCs, and improve their productivity. Pangalawa, amid the pandemic that increased the disruptions in education, these proposals can improve the value of proposition of higher education. Not only would it open opportunities for innovation, but will also raise the variety of degree programs. Tungkol naman po sa establishment of CHED provincial offices, I've said this before and I'll say it again, kung iyahalin tulad po natin sa container ng tubig ang CHED, ang nangyayari po, buhos tayo ng buhos ng tubig, ng additional mandate sa container na ito, and as a result, umaapaw na po ang trabaho ng CHED without additional personnel, without additional offices, na compromise po yung ginagawa nilang quality assurance which we all believe is very important. Kapag naging batas po ang establishment at conversion ng mga campuses, magiging karagdagang trabaho po ito para sa CHED. Nandiyan na rin po ang doktor para sa bayan and I thank the Commission and Bank for their prompt action on our request to release the IRR of this law. Again, nagpapasalamat po tayo sa ating mga SUC presidents. Thank you sir, ma'am, for your service to the higher education sector. And of course, to our dear colleagues, our uh, Senate President Pro Tem, Senator Recto, Senator Marcos, Senator Subiri, Senator Angara, and our counterparts in the House of Representatives na pagsusulong po ng mga panukalang batas na ito. Muli ho, magandang umaga, maraming salamat po, and may God bless us all. At this juncture, let me uh, give the floor to our distinguished colleagues. Let me start off by acknowledging and giving uh, the floor to our Senate President Pro Temp, Senator Ralph Recto. Sir, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for, for uh, uh, giving importance and credit. Senator Recto, I'm, I'm sorry, Senate we cannot Bill, hear you. Uh, the number can you... present, the Senate that I am sorry, Senator Recto, we, we can't hear you. Sorry, sorry. Can you hear me now, Mr. Chairman? Yes, yes. You're, you're clear now. Thank you, thank you. Please proceed, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can you hear me? Yes, Mr. President. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very thank much. You. Uh, thank you for all your advising in uh, Senate Bill number 2111. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can you hear me? We can hear you now, uh, sir. We can hear you. Yes, thank you. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much.
much. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for prioritizing in today's agenda, Senate Bill number 2111, an act declaring the Batanga State University as a national engineering university, strengthening the university for the purpose and appropriating funds therefore, Mr. President. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, to keep my time brief, uh, may I use or insert the explanatory note of the bill as part of the this committee, sorry, uh, to declare Batanga State University as an entity, Mr. President. Uh, so, Thank Mr. You. Chairman, uh, with that, I have no further uh, opening remarks, but again, to thank the very chairman and uh, for prioritizing this measure this morning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much to our dear uh, Senate President Pro Tem. And uh, uh, it's so inserted, uh, Comsec, the uh, explanatory uh, note of, uh, uh, of the measure as part of the sponsorship speech of our uh, Senate President Pro Tem. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Recto. Um, we also have with us Senator uh, Amy Marcos, if there are any uh, opening statements. Senator Marcos, Senator Subiri, Senator Angara. If none, uh, we will uh, proceed. But before that, let me just uh, acknowledge the presence of our dear uh, representatives uh, from uh, uh, Palawan Congresswoman uh, Suril Abueg Zaldivar, Cong Congresswoman Maricel Natividad Nagano, Congresswoman Emery Lollipop Wano Dizon, Congresswoman Ann Hofer, and Congressman D.V. Sabeliano. Thank you very much uh, for being with us. Thank you, sir and ma'am. Uh, we have several local bills to discuss, and first on our agenda uh, is House Bill number 9518, in consideration of Senate Bill number 211, uh, revising uh, the Batangas State University Charter and declaring Batangas State University as the National Engineering University. Uh, may we recognize uh, if there are uh, authors coming from the House of Representatives, we can uh, we can hear and um, ask them to be. Uh, we can recognize our. Uh, uh, counterpart, our colleagues from HOR. We have here with us a, a list of uh, authors, representatives uh, Vilma Santos Recto, Elenita Ermita Buhain, Rani Abu, Maria Teresa Colliantes, Lianda Bolilia, Mario Vittorino, Vittorio Marino, and uh, others. Thank you uh, for being with us. Perhaps we could hear. Uh, the CHED, uh, if uh, Chairman Popo is here or anyone uh, from uh, CHED to uh, make a comment on this particular measure. Who's with us, uh, Comsec? Is Chairman Popo around? We have with us uh, Mr. Uh, Rayen Sabate and Ms. Rita Siskar from CHED. May we hear from them? Mr. Chair, good morning, po, Honorable Senator. Isabella. Yes, please uh, introduce yourself, please. Mr. Chair, this is uh, Luisa Valencia. We have here Attorney Haro, our Executive Director, Sir Chair. As the Executive our Director of CHED is present, right? Yes, Sir Chair, uh, Attorney Cinderella Filipina Haro. Okay, Chair. can we uh, hear from him? Um, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning, po, Mr. Chair. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. You're recognized. Please proceed. Apa. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, we would like to uh, extend also our greetings to all the members of the CHTE and, of, of course, to the CHTE chair. Uh, on the part of the commission, Mr. Chair, we interpose no objection to the passage the, uh, of this bill into law, but we propose uh, several amendments to the bill to enhance it. 
uh, we recognize that uh, Batangas State University is a leading institution of higher learning in the field of engineering. The performance of its graduates in engineering board examination is, um, of course, the subject of um, has been um, has been phenomenal, Mr. Chair. So the facilities and programs of Batsu are among the best in the country. There is no doubt. Its, link, its international linkages, industry engagements, and researches are worthy of recognition as well. Um, so, Mr. Chair, the, the, uh, the Commission, on the part of, of the Commission, we recommend, though, that as a condition for BATSU's legislative confirmation of the status as a national engineering university, uh, we recommend uh, BATSU to phase out its non engineering programs and instead exclusively focus on its engineering and technological courses to ensure that the high quality of the latter courses is maintained. Um, it, if this is not done, the problem that we are foreseeing is that it would spread its resources and focus too thin, which would inevitably result in the deterioration of other engineering, of its engineering and technological prog uh, programs, um, its core competency. Uh, and then the commission also recommends the inclusion of the following amendments as part of the transition of BATSU into a national engineering university as um, academic excellence. The university has the responsibility to maintain and enhance its high academic standards in the performance of its function of instruction, research and extension and public service as a national Engineering University should ensure the following, that at least 50% of its total enrollment must be under engineering and technology-related programs, stop the offering of new programs not allied to engineering or technology and or not supportive of its uh, multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary uh, design and content, accelerate the faculty development program in the fields of engineering and technology, lead in the conduct of scientific, innovative, and technological research and development, and in the generation, dissemination, and application of research-based knowledge. BSU, BSU shall also comply with the following criteria in terms of enrollment within five years from the effectivity of this law. Uh, of the total number of students with, of the BSU... With, with the permission enrolled, of the chairman. As, uh, Senate President Pro Temp, you recognize. Yes, I'm sorry yeah, to the uh, representative of CHED, uh, but what you mentioned uh, are all incorporated in the Senate bill, is that correct? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, yung mga certain portions lang po. Yes, let me reiterate or let me repeat what I said. No, Your recommendations are all incorporated in the Senate bill, is that correct? Uh, ito po ah. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Yes, it is. Yes. Thank you very much. I just wanted that clarified, no? Because I was listening to the representative from Chad, and we have taken notice of that. While it may not be in the House bill, it is already incorporated in the Senate bill. Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, thank you, Senator Recto. You know, when uh, a bill here in the Senate pass through the scrutiny of the office of the, our Senate President Pro Tem, you will be sure that it's already been uh, scrutinized to the bones. <laughs> okay, uh, please proceed, uh, uh, ma'am, you, you may uh, proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, to continue, lang po, Mr. Chair, as, as I've mentioned, we interpose, uh, no, uh, we interpose no objection to the bill, uh, but you emphasis lang po doon sa uh, that the BATSU will now focus on its engineering and technological programs, Mr. Chair. Okay, we, we take note of that. Uh, Thank you. Uh, this juncture, may, may we recognize also uh, our uh, distinguished um, uh, president of uh, Batanga State University, uh, President Tirso Ronquillo III, uh, sir? Yeah. Mr. Chairman, before we yes. recognize the president of the Batanga yes, State Senator University, Recto, let me put on record that uh, the president has been one of the best, if not the best, presidents of Batanga State University. And let me commend him for his leadership, for his outstanding performance, and for the vision that he has laid out for the Batanga State University to be the premier national engineering university in the country and his good ties with all the stakeholders in the province of Batangas, particularly parents, students, 
and even legislators and uh, community leaders and local government officials. No? So uh, let me take this opportunity to thank uh, our president, uh, Dr. Ronquillo, for your presence today and for helping us craft this measure and for valuable leadership. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, for that opportunity. So thank you, uh, thank you Sir Torrecto, Dr. and uh, good morning. And uh, let me uh, spread into the records also that uh, this uh, representation would second your motion, uh, Your Honor. And I have seen how uh, President uh, Tirso, Dr. Tirso, uh, work and uh, how he how he works not only for Batangas uh, State University, um, uh, Your Honor, but also as president of Philippine Association of State uh, Colleges and uh, Universities. So thank you for that, uh, Senator Recto. We uh, recognize uh, President uh, Tirso Ronquillo, sir, Dr. Ronquillo, you're uh, thank you, recognized. Thank you, uh, Senator Joel Villanueva, the Chairman of the Committee on Higher and Technical Education. Location. Uh, our uh, Senator, my Senator, Senator Ralph Recto, the Senate President for Tempore, uh, Senator Amy Marcos, uh, all the members of the House of Representatives present in this uh, hearing, the uh, Chairperson of the committee, uh, Commission on Higher Education, uh, Chair Popo Rivera and said family, the president of our state universities and colleges uh, present today, other resource persons, a pleasant morning to everyone. At the outset, I would like to express our sincerest appreciation and recognition to the Philippine Senate for its continuing support in the strengthening and advancement of higher education in the country, particularly on greater government spending in educational facilities, infrastructure, and technological advancement. It has been more pronounced during this extraordinary challenging time brought about by the pandemic. We are immensely grateful to the Honorable Senator Ralph Directo, President for Tempore, who shares our belief and conviction on the critical importance of having the National Engineering University in the country, has filed and introduced Senate Bill 2111, which is now for the liberation of this honorable body. We are extremely grateful too to House Bill number 9518 of the same title and purpose, which is authored by the Honorable Representative, uh, Deputy Speaker Bill Santos Recto, Ermita Buhain, uh, Abu Juliantes, Bolilla, Marino, uh, Salceda, Swansing, Tambunting, Babasa, Tupas, Ilago, Suntay, Deloso, Montalia, Arenas, Tejada, Nogurales, Swansing, Heron, Evka, Sabillano, Padieros, uh, Garin, Kirosologo, Biolago, Divinesa, Nieto, Aresco, Rosas, Pulamat, and Ligarda had already been approved by the House on August 3, 2021 and has transmitted to and received by the Senate on August 4, 2021. On behalf of the more than 55,000 students and around 2,000 faculty and staff uh, of the, in the 11 campuses of Batanga State University, our deepest gratitude. Uh, Senate Bill 2111 and House Bill Number 9518 declaring the Tanga State University as the National Engineering University shall serve as its passport and legal foundation to evolve from being a higher education leader in the region to an important national leader in producing countries' highly skilled knowledge force in the global knowledge economy. What a National Engineering University can do for the country and the transformation and reshaping it requires for engineering education is beyond the purpose and scope of our current charter, 90th Republic Act 1945, which is the existing university charter, hence the need for a revised Batanga State University Charter. We strongly affirm before the honorable body our purpose and commitment as the National Engineering University that is clearly defined in Section 3 of both Senate Bill Number 2111 and House Bill Number 9518. The Batanga State University is held to take such a pioneering role in reshaping the vision of engineering education in the country. Without a legislative mandate, such a role cannot be conveyed to and assumed by the university. The university is very much pleased and, uh, and in agreement with the provision of Senate Bill Number 2111 and House Bill Number 9518. It provides a sufficient legal mandate in taking a proactive role in ensuring that our engineering education and Philippine engineers we produce are at par with our global counterparts and are well-rounded human beings mindful of sustainable development. With the distinction and greater flexibility that the proposed measure, Mr. Chair, 
the university can fully assert its leadership and attain certain level of excellence necessary in shaping a new vision for engineering education in the country. Mr. Chair, I would like to thank, of course, the CHED for the support to this proposed mission and, of course, to the uh, support, uh, the greater support of our very own Senator, Senator Recto, and we believe that Batanga State University will be uh, uh, having more opportunity to serve our country in terms of engineering when this law is passed. Mr. Chair, I would like to go back to the uh, earlier recommendation uh, raised by our representative from CHED, uh, Attorney Haro, regarding the course offering. Uh, it's really, yes, uh, as pointed out by Senator Recto, it's already in our bill that uh, we have to uh, focus on our uh, engineering programs and other technology-related courses. However, we have to maintain other programs, but we cannot offer uh, new programs not related to engineering and technology. As that was actually pointed out even our discussion in the House, that uh, we can continue our existing program. However, we cannot offer any more new programs not related to engineering and technology. Mr. Chair, that's our humble submission. And thank you very much once again, Senator Recto, our good senator, and uh, Senator Joel, thank you very much for. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Ronquillo. So you're saying that um, uh, you agree that after this, you can no longer offer any other uh, or new programs uh, except engineering programs. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, engineering and other technology-related programs, Mr. Chair. And other technology-related uh, uh, programs. Thank you for that. Uh, are there any other um, uh, stakeholders who uh, wanted to, uh, to be part of this uh, discussion? Because I was looking at the Senate bill, the uh, uh, bill authored by Senator Recto, Senate Bill Number 2111. It's quite comprehensive and complete in the, uh, this particular measure already address the uh, issues uh, raised a while ago by our representatives from CHED. Um, anyway, are there any other uh, matters regarding this uh, particular measure? Senator Recto, would you like to comment or uh, before the chair would, uh, would uh, uh, direct the committee secretariat to uh, prepare the corresponding committee report? subject to the uh, amendment submitted and uh, subject to style in case uh, there are uh, grammatical and typographical errors. I have no objection, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much for your able leadership also in this committee. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Recto. Having said that, uh, so ordered, uh, Committee uh, Secretary, uh, there being no objections to House uh, Bill Number 9518 in consideration of Senate Bill Number 2111. So ordered. Thank you. Um, I, I can see right now, Senator Aimi uh, Marcos, if you would like to make a preliminary statement or opening statements, uh, you, you're, you're free to. Right? Yes, to thank you very so. much. Uh, needless to say, we also fully support Senator's, Senator Recto's initiative, and we hope that the chairman, as well as the others here, also support the many bills that I have co-authored for the Senate panel, Palawan, Leyte, Cagayan, uh, Kalookan and the rest. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, uh, Senator Villanueva. Thank you, Senator Marcos. Uh, thank you for your support. We uh, made mention a while ago of uh, these particular uh, measures, and uh, thank you for always uh, being with us. Uh, uh, we we will proceed to our next agenda because we have quite a, a lot here. Uh, second on our agenda is House Bill Number 9520, or uh, revising the uh, Tarlac State University Charter. Uh, if we have with us uh, uh, authors from the House, House Bill Number 9520, uh, Representatives uh, Victoria and others. Yes, Chairman. Morning. Yes, uh, Representative Yap. Yes, uh, Chair. Chairman yes, Villanueva, uh, good morning. Your Honor, my yes, good just friend, like to... I, was, uh, I was trying to look where you are, but uh, it's okay. I think it's, we're having problems with your video connection. Up. Uh, you're recognized, sir, Congressman Yap. Thank you very much, Chairman Villanueva, distinguished uh, senators and sponsors. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Just a brief uh, statement. 
TSU is one of the most admired and respected public universities in the country and abroad. It has been in the service for 115 years, providing quality education in Tarlac and nearby provinces. It offers a wide array of course programs and research studies through its 10 colleges and three campuses. By virtue of RA 6764, it was converted into a state university on October 13, 1989. Consequently, TSU has achieved so many academic milestones and was able to establish global alliances with various prestigious colleges and universities in Asia. Over the years, TSU's vision is to become a, a premier state university in the Asia-Pacific region. It is committed to become a globally competitive institution by ensuring equitable access to education for people empowerment and professional development, most especially in this fast paced time of globalization. However, despite its current exalted status, there's a need to revise the charter of the university to adapt to the future and prepare its students towards achieving excellence in global development. It is the hope of this humble representation that through the proposed legislation, RA number 6764, will be amended so that the goal of TSU to become a premier university in Asia will turn into a reality in the forthcoming years. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and members of the Senate. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Congressman uh, Victor Yap. Uh, thank you for joining us. We also uh, have with us, uh, oh, before before we recognize the uh, Tarlac State University uh, President, may we ask uh, Ched also to uh, uh, give its uh, comments on this uh, particular measure? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, uh, on the part of the Commission, we interpose no objection to the legislative intent of this bill, uh, Mr. Chair, um, and we see this as increasing access to quality higher education, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that. I'm sure uh, Congressman Yap would be uh, very happy to, to hear that statement. So let, let's hear from Tarlac State University President, um, uh, President Mirna Maliari, ma'am. You're recognized. Yes, uh, Honorable Chair, magandang umaga po sa ating uh, Chairman ng Committee on Higher and Technical Vocational Education and all uh, the Honorable Senators present here today and the officials of the Commission on Higher Education and our colleagues uh, in PASUK and of course our very own uh, Congressman Honorable Bikya. So uh, first of all, we would like to thank um, our Honorable Senators and, of course, Honorable Bikyap and the Commission on Higher Education for the support in this House Bill, uh, Senate Bill 9520 and House Bill 7797. And true to the contents of the uh, bill, uh, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members of uh, the Senate, uh, this bill will uh, open a wider access for our students needing quality education as we, we have emphasized the opening of uh, uh, campuses in various municipalities, as well as focusing our mandate on science and technology. So with that, Honorable Chair, we would like to uh, affirm our commitment to quality education and to uh, ensuring access of quality education to those who need it most. Thank you very much, Paul, and God bless. Thank you. Uh, with that, uh, I think uh, there are no uh, other stakeholders who wanted to uh, uh, participate in this uh, uh, deliberation. I think it's very clear and uh, Chad interposes uh, no objection. And if there are no objections, uh, Your Honors, to House Bill Number 9520, the uh, Committee Secretariat is uh, hereby directed to prepare the corresponding committee report subject to the amendment submitted and uh, subject to style. So ordered. Thank you. Congratulations, ma'am. Congratulations. Once, once again, thank, thank you. Thank Congratulations, you. President Nolari and the, the gang of uh, TSU. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Congressman Vic. Uh, yep. uh, at this juncture, we proceed with our next agenda. Uh, but before that, may we uh, recognize uh, our distinguished uh, colleague from the city of Makati, Senator Nancy Binay, is also uh, joining us. Thank you, ma'am. If you have any uh, opening statements or remarks, you are uh, uh, free to do so. Seatmate. Well, 
Good, good morning, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we are here just to support all the house bills. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Thank you very much uh, for our uh, for 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 uh, the presence for your presence here today this morning. Thank you, Ma'am Nancy. This juncture, we proceed with House Bill Number Six Nine Five Seven Five. This is in consideration of Senate Bill Number Two Three Nine One, integrating the Palawan State University College of Community Resources Development external campuses in the province of Palawan and in the city of Puerto Princesa as regular campuses of the Palawan State University. Uh, if uh, Senator Aimi would like to uh, make uh, uh, a statement or uh, insert to the records the explanatory note of, his, uh, of her measure, we, will, we can also do that. Uh, Ma'am Aimi, you're recognized. <clears throat> Senator Marcos, if you would like to make a, a statement. Nasa kabilang hearing si Senator Aimi. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, let's proceed. If we have uh, with us uh, the authors of the measure from the House of Representatives, House Bill Number 6975, we have Representative uh, Cyril Beng Abweg Saldivar. He's also a good friend of this representation. Ma'am, you're recognized, mm -hmm. ma'am. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, good, morning good morning to uh, our um, dis distinguished senators, uh, Senate President Otempore Ralph Recto, and of course, um, Senator Amy Marcos, who filed the similar bill in the Senate regarding this measure. Good morning, ma'am, and um, Senators um, Zubiri Angara and Senator Nancy Binay. Good morning, po, and to all our colleagues in the House of Representatives as well as um, all the resource persons and guests of the uh, this distinguished committee. Um, with your kind indulgence, Mr. Chair, um, if I may be allowed to just turn off my video because our connection here is in Palawan is, is not ideal at the moment. Um, but I am here and uh, I would like to uh, thank, of course, the Honorable Committee led by uh, Chairman Senator jo Joel Villanueva for giving due consideration to our measure. This yes, was filed. Uh, yes, we will allow we will allow you, ma'am. We know how, how hard it is right now to to get all these uh, connections uh, fixed. Uh, thank you, thank you. As long as we can hear you, thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, this measure was filed actually since the 16th Congress um, during the time of my uh, when my brother was representing our district. Um, unfortunately, it did not pass 16th and 17th Congresses, and we hope that this 18th Congress, we will be lucky and finally see uh, this measure uh, passed into law. Uh, Mr. Chair, <clears throat> uh, House Bill Number 6975, or an act integrating the Palawan State University College of Community Resources Development, or CCRD, external campuses in the province of Palawan and in the city of Puerto Princesa as regular campuses of Palawan State University, amending for the purpose Republic Act Number 7818 and appropriating funds, therefore, uh, is a very important legislation for us in Palawan. And uh, please allow me to give you a, bit, a brief background of the Palawan State University. It was established in 1994 by virtue of Republic Act Number 7818, uh, which converted the then Palawan State College into Palawan State University. Uh, the, because of that law, the main campus in Puerto Princesa City was established, Mr. Chair. Since then, many other campuses in different municipalities of our province were established, which became known as College of Community Resources Development or CCRD external campuses. However, Mr. Chair, these external campuses, not being part of Republic Act Number 7818, were not legally recognized. PSU CCRDs were organically established through a memorandum of agreement entered into by the respective local government units, the Parent Teacher Council of the town, and the PSU. LGUs provide the infrastructure and extends funding for the salaries of the faculty and staff 
the PTCs or Parent Teacher Councils collect school fees for operation expenses and acquisition, acquisition of facilities, while the PSU manages the CCRD and provides the faculty and non-teaching staff for the centers. Mr. Chair, Palawan is one of the largest provinces in the country with a total land area of 14,649.73 square kilometers. And if Puerto Princesa, which is a highly urbanized city, were to be added to this total land area, we would have 17,030.75 square kilometers. We have 23 municipalities, 11 of which are island municipalities, and five of our external campuses or CCRDs are located in these island municipalities. Many of these external campuses were established about 30 years ago in the 1990s. Through the years, there has been a steady increase in the student population and operation costs of the CCRDs. This has become a challenge for both the LGUs and students, as this means an increase in funding requirements. Thus, LGUs in recent years have been trying to scale down their support or to withdraw the assistance. The parents, on the other hand, majority of whom come from depressed areas and some of whom come from indigenous people's communities and low-income households are clamoring for lower school fees. With the pandemic we are now facing, it truly has been a challenge for our constituents in Palawan to continue sending their children to school. Many of them have been greatly affected by the socio-economic crisis we are experiencing, losing their jobs and livelihood, and they are now left with very little, less or no income at all. Once this bill is passed and the various CCRDs have been granted legal status, the budgetary constraints faced by the institution will hopefully be addressed. Given our today's situation, this will be a huge relief to many of us in Palawan. And the government will be able to help more families in sending their children to school, and many more Palawan youth can continue their dreams of success and triumph. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair, for this opportunity to uh, um, sponsor this bill. May I just um, additionally manifest, Mr. Chair, that after the uh, passage of this measure in the House of Representatives, we received a letter from the Palawan State University President, Dr. Ramon Docto, requesting for the addition of three additional campuses, uh, namely um, those located in the municipalities of El Nido, Araceli, and one campus in San Rafael in Puerto Princesa City, which are, have also long existed as CCRDs. And uh, we would like to request the uh, Honorable uh, Committee to consider um, the addition of these uh, campuses. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and good morning to all. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Congresswoman uh, Abueg Saldivar. Uh, we'd like to hear from Chet uh, for their comments on this uh, particular measure, unless my uh, colleague, Senator Marcos, Senator Binay, would like to uh, uh, add or ask questions. We'll proceed. Uh, we recognize our representative from uh, Chet, attorney, uh, ma'am. Good morning Thank again, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, on this bill, we interpose no objection. In our uh, deliberation in the Congress, we also recommended the funding which would, uh, which should be included in the uh, proposed bill. But I see, Mr. Chair, that in the Senate bill, there is already a mechanism. We are uh, just we just want to put on record, Mr. Chair, that we are um, of course recommending um, a an increase in their in their gar eventually, Mr. Chair, especially in capital outlay and PS for their faculty items. Uh, we are uh, raising this recommendation so that the PSU will be able to retain also its uh, SUC leveling, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. We take note of that, uh, especially with the budget for our uh, uh, faculty members, the items that you, you are uh, uh, talking about. Um, I was just wondering, uh, Ma'am Attorney Haro, uh, I think uh, what uh, Congresswoman uh, Abueg Zaldivar was mentioning a while ago is worth uh, considering the uh, three additional uh, uh, campuses. Uh, Perhaps if you could uh, uh, shed light on this and uh, what would be the position of Chet, because we wanted to consider it uh, right now in our uh, uh, deliberation uh, in connection to that additional campuses that will be integrated to uh, Palawan State University. 
I was I also received a letter actually from uh, President Ramon Docto and we will acknowledge uh, him later. But we would like to find out your uh, your uh, comments on this particular matter, ma'am, attorney. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, on the part of the commission, we do not interpose uh, any objection to the inclusion of uh, the three external campuses as um, manifested also by our uh, regional director in Chetro, uh, Mimaropa, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you very much, Attorney Haro. We we will uh, recognize now the Palawan State University President, President uh, Ramon Docto, sir, and perhaps you could... Uh, Mr. Also... Chair? Yes, uh, Senator Binay, yes, you and recognize. The, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Siguro for the record lang, how much is the budget uh, for next year? Yes, uh, Baka si President, President Doctor can answer. Maybe if we can uh, listen to uh, President uh, Doctor and uh, address the concerns of uh, Senator Binay and this representation with regard to the uh, budget and the uh, uh, how many campuses are there at Palawan State University? How many are regular campuses and how many are extension campuses? And what you, we intend to do uh, in this uh, particular measure. So, and, and Mr. Uh, yes, Chairman, uh, siguro pwede padagdag da din uh, with the additional request kung magkana yung uh, uh, corresponding budget for that. Okay, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Are looking at, uh, uh, yes. more or less the the budget that we, 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 we need to infuse, additional budget that we need to Yes, uh, we recognize President Ramon Docto of Palawan State University. Sir, we recognize. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Good morning, po. Uh, Honorable Chair, Senator Joel Villanueva, Chair of uh, Commission on Higher Education. And uh, we have uh, Senator Amy Marcos, who sponsored the bill. Uh, Senator Ralph Recto, Senator uh, Pro Tempor. Other uh, members of present, we have also uh, our uh, uh, Senator Nancy Binay, and then uh, members of the House of Representative. Can we hear you? Can you hear me, sir? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Please yes. proceed. And uh, also uh, our uh, House of Representative, especially our uh, Congressman being uh, Saldivar of the second district of the province of Palawan. Mm -hmm. uh, a representative from uh, Commission on Higher Education and uh, the university president, president uh, good morning everyone honorable chair uh, i would like to have this bill uh, you know uh, palawan state university composed of uh, 17 campuses and uh, we have uh, seven from the south and nine from the north as mentioned by uh, congressman bing some of this uh, of the uh, campuses are located on the island municipalities of Palawan, you know, the uh, geographical location of Palawan. And uh, some of these we offer uh, uh, these uh, campuses before and uh, due to the uh, request of the local government unit. And we are operating uh, these campuses and uh, as of now, uh, but uh, most of the budget was also only from the main campus and uh, therefore uh, this house bill integrating the Palawan State University College of Community Resource and Development we see the uh, we call this CCRD uh, uh, external campuses in the province of Palawan and in the city of Puerto Princesa as a regular campus uh, as a regular campus uh, therefore uh, and of Palawan State University amending for the purpose a Republic Act 7818 and appropriating uh, funds thereof for the proper uh, operation of these campuses, Mr. Chair. Okay. Budget is, that, is that it? Are you done? Yes, sir. Yeah, I, um, I think you did not answer uh, the concerns of uh, Senator Nancy Bina, you know, with regard to the uh, infusion of additional budget. I have here with me the uh, proposed budget for 2022, Senator Nancy, it's 467,000. Yes. Now, the question of Senator Nancy and the concerns of uh, Attorney Haro Ched, 
yung pong pag uh, pag ensure na meron po tayong budget at meron tayong additional uh, faculty items no dito sa mga mga nabanggit natin na na kailangan pondohan sir yung question kay ni Senator Nancy ano ano ho yung uh, ballpark figure if you have that ballpark figure that we need uh, as an additional uh, funding for this uh, uh, campuses na integrate ko natin Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, you recognize, sir. Yes, sir. So as of the moment, I, yeah, we have the budget of four hundred sixty-seven uh, million six hundred seventy-seven. Uh, no, thousand. And yes, then uh, said. for the operation, if uh, we have to include the CCRD, we have uh, around one hundred fifty million uh, for personnel. And that employee. is the present budget, sir, or that is the uh, Addition. budget additional uh, budget infusion? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. you are asking for is that the present budget you're talking about? Dun sa uh, CCR din ninyo? Yes, sir. For personnel, uh, personnel and MO, yeah, MOO. My, my, question, my question is: that's the current budget, or that's what you're asking for? Yes, sir. Uh, yes. This is the, what we are asking. This for. is what we are asking for, addition. So it's not part of the uh, 467 million. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Senator Nancy. Go ahead. Pa, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. And hopefully Senator. during the budget deliberation, eh, mahanapan natin ng 150 million. <laughs> Kaya ang kaya ni po. Senator Amy Marcos yan. <laughs> na... <laughs> nasa, nasa blue ribbon din. <laughs> um, anyway, um, so are there any uh, other comments? Uh, yeah, Senator la, Nancy. Hindi, siguro last na lang. What if hindi mahanapan ng 150 million? What will be the effect, uh, President Dompto? Uh, yes. Uh, the operation will still be the same. Uh, it, it will be uh, from the main campus and uh, from the local government unit po and uh, parent teachers council uh, as of now we are operating with uh, some of the uh, item from the main campus was given to them and then uh, from the local government unit uh, will give us uh, some uh, budget and also from the parent teachers council we have the parent teacher council thank you uh, ma madam thank you mr chairman Thank you. Also, may existing budget ho kasi yan. So yung, for example, yung tatlong extension schools that we are talking about. And Congressman uh, uh, Chicoy Alvarez uh, informed me about it. That they're in existence. Uh, it's just that they wanted to integrate. Tama ho ba, uh, President Dokdo? You wanted to integrate yung uh, uh, three additional campuses, yung sa El Nido, sa Puerto Princesa, etc. Yes, Mr. Chair. Nasiguro na ano lang, hindi isa na, na ano sa pag-type yung tatlong na ito. Zero. Dati na ito pong mga campuses. Yes, okay. Thank you. And uh, having said that, if there are any uh, other matters regarding this uh, particular measure, and if there are no objections uh, to House Bill number 6975 in consideration of Senate Bill number 2391 filed by Senator Amy Marcos, the uh, committee secretariat is uh, hereby directed to prepare the corresponding committee report subject to the amendment submitted and subject to style so ordered thank you thank you sir thank, thank you, you Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. congratulations thank you, thank you. Chair. thank you senator nancy moving on we have house bill number 7841 converting the illegal city national school of fisheries in barangay buruun uh, Iligan City, province of Lanao del Norte, into a polytechnic state college to be known as the Iligan City Polytechnic State College. May we recognize our uh, uh, colleague from uh, the House of Representatives, uh, Congressman Frederick Shaw, uh, to uh, give his uh, uh, remarks. Congressman uh, Shaw, you're recognized. The uh, president also is uh, with us, the president of uh, of uh, Iligan City National School of Fisheries. Huh? 
wala dito. Good morning. Yes. Si, are you around? Ronilo Apas, Dr. Ronilo Apas, President of Iligan City Polytechnic State College. Sir, are you here? If you're not, we'll proceed with the next uh, House bill. We'll lay this on the table, Muna. No. Thing. Oh, there, there, there. We, we, we can't see you, we can't hear you, sir. Uh, uh, oh, there, there. Dr. Uh, Apas, yes, you're recognized. Yes, sir. Can you uh, give your uh, opening statement regarding this uh, measure, sir? You're recognized, please. Thank you very much, uh, sir, Senator Joel Villanueva, uh, Senator Rob Recto, Senator Amy Marcos, Senator Nancy Binay, and of course, our Long District Congressman, uh, Congressman Pilipik Xiao. Uh, I hope that this will this committee will hear our voice in converting Ligan City, uh, Ligan City, City National School officers into Ligan City Politic State College. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll ask questions later. Um, may we hear from uh, the representative of uh, Commission Higher Education, Attorney uh, Haro? Would you like to uh, give your comments on this particular measure? Um, Mr. Chair, Apa. yung details po, Mr. Chair, um, I would also uh, like to, uh, if we can also include in the discussion our RT uh, of uh, Chedro 10, Mr. Chair. But based on the information, Mr. Chair, our position is that there is already a state university in uh, that area, MSUIIT, Mr. Chair. So we would also like to know um, what will be the special, I mean, what will be the priority areas of uh, the, the national high school and uh, the reason for the conversion of this national high school into Polytechnic State College. That's a uh, legitimate uh, concern. Uh, Ma'am, uh, may we ask uh, Dr. Uh, Apas to, uh, to uh, answer these concerns? Sir, thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Chief, Mr. Chair. Uh, our reason here uh, is that uh, it's a strategic place to establish the tertiary education since it is will cater to the needs of the learner in the area and the neighboring municipality of Lana del Norte, Rinamon, Kaswagan, Maigo, Kulambogan, etc. The congested elegant city will be far away from learners within a below poverty line. Second, the need to revitalize and strengthen the fishery education, which is now becoming unpopular. The Illigan City National School of Fisheries being a technical fishery school is an ideal institution to offer agri fisheries courses through its converted form. This will be this will promote the economic activities in the region in terms of agri fisheries. Number three, the need to provide access to and offer other forms of tertiary education for learners in area aside from fishery courses, such as baccalaureate degree, diploma, and other technical program and basic education. Fourth, the Ligan City Politics State College will be the hybrid institution offering child and TISTA program. Fifth, the Ligan City Politics State College will serve as manpower reservoir in the region area for typical agri-fisheries agri degrees and basic education completers qualifier. The elegant city politics state college aim to be the center for skill and training and development as well as in the research and institution. Seven, elegant city politics state college will be the source of hope for the families living within and below the poverty line. That's all, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, Thank you for that, no, uh, President Apas. I, I hope that uh, our representative from CHED is listening because she's on the phone. Um, I, I wanted to find out uh, if the, uh, the uh, statements made by uh, President Apas would suffice to uh, 
establish and again uh, convert this uh, Iligan City National School of Fisheries to a Polytechnic State College, uh, would they fall in this uh, uh, category uh, as far as uh, standards uh, are concerned, uh, ma'am? Mr. Chair. Ma'am? Yes, attorney. Okay. Yes, Mr. Chair, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Actually, I was conversing with uh, our regional director in uh, Region 10, Mr. Chair, so that we can get the proper information. And um, I was uh, informed, Mr. Chair, that in Iligan, Mr. Chair, there is already, as I mentioned, MSU IIT. There is also a, uh, I think, a newly established uh, local com uh, community college, the Colegio de Iligan, Mr. Chair. Uh, and there are 11 private higher education institutions in the area and i think the location of uh, the national high school which is being proposed to be converted is uh, also not you know uh, hindi hindi po siya malayo from from this uh, uh, colleges also mr chair so um, on the part of the commission mr chair we have not yet see the uh, immediate uh, necessity, Mr. Chair, of establishing this, uh, of converting the National High School into State College, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, thank you. We hear you loud and clear. Dr. Apas, would you like to rebut or say something? Because uh, we cannot just uh, keep on passing measures without, uh, without giving us uh, ammunition. Uh again mr chair actually yes, the please. distance from the city from the city is more than 25 kilometers uh it's very hard for our community people the learners will go to the city uh the fear here uh, from the uh bro on proper to the city is 30 pesos so therefore it, it very much expensive in terms of transportation others uh usually as i've said that uh, we want to help the community in terms of their uh, way of living. Much of the desire nga, we could, we could makatulong-tulong tayo sa mga pamilya dito. And then, aside from that, uh, as the fishery program is now uh, hindi na masyadong competitive dito. Wala na, wala na kang makita dito na uh, nag-pursue for fishery program. Sana uh, tulungan mo ang barangay Buroon para maiyahon sa kairapan. Amat po. Uh, we are here to help in any way we can. Uh, but there are standards that we need to to make sure uh, na na-meet po natin. No? And that's why we have with us uh, our uh, friends from CHED to help us out. Um, Attorney Haro, meron ho bang... Uh, uh, for example, yung proximity, yung layo ng isang eskwelahan to another, as you made mention, merong MSU, may kolehiyo, uh, de iligan, etc. Um, tapos yung uh, binabanggit po ni uh, Dr. Apas na ang pinaka-niche niya is uh, on uh, agriculture, if I'm not mistaken, fisheries, etc. Uh, Attorney Haro, can you uh, help us out? Um, Mr. Chair, um, we take into consideration the manifestation of uh, Dr. Ab uh, Apas. Apas. Apas na, um, par uh, the National High School is uh, 25 kilometers from, this, from the city. Our um, question also, Mr. Chair, is that uh, if we will consider the, the distance of uh, this National High School in all other uh, universities or all other colleges that we've mentioned, MSU, IIT, the 11 private HEIs, and the one, the one community college. We uh, don't know, parin po, Mr. Chair, kung, uh, who will enroll also, kung sino po yung mga feeder programs po nila dito po sa National High School. Because this will be a newly established, of course, or uh, wala pa kasi siyang, wala pa siyang uh, magiging college pa lang ito, Mr. Chair. So we don't know also who will be the um, kumbaga, uh, population po nila who would enroll into this institution kung sakaling this will be approved. Usually, Mr. Chair, actually, we uh, require sana a, at least a feasibility study from the proponents so that we can also ascertain the preparedness of uh, for instance, of this national high school to be converted into a state college. Thank you, po. Uh, 
perhaps we, we can uh, get a list of uh, what you want from uh, from the uh, university uh, before we can uh, proceed uh, Attorney Haro, would that be uh, okay if we can submit to the committee uh, what you're looking at and uh, ito yung mga requirements and you feel na with this uh, listing, you would agree and you will interpose no objection? Would that be uh, okay? Mr. Chair, we will submit po. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, we will, uh, we will uh, tackle this in a uh, later on or probably in the next uh, hearing uh, unless uh, President Apas would like to uh, say something or anyway we'll, we'll, we'll uh, lay this on the table for a while we'll proceed with the uh, the next item which is uh, House Bill number 9179 uh, in consideration of Senate Bill number 2254 this is converting the Solana Extension Campus of the Cagayan State University into a regular campus. Uh, may we recognize our uh, authors from the House, uh, Representative uh, Joseph Jojo Lara. Uh, sir, Congressman Lara, you're recognized. If uh, Congressman Lara is not around, may we recognize the President of uh, Cagayan State University uh, SUC President uh, Urduha Alvarado. Ma'am, you're recognized. Magandang umaga po, uh, Thank you. sir. Uh, the chairperson of the Senate Committee on Higher Education, Senator Joel Villanueva, and the honorable members of this committee, the chairperson of the House Committee on Higher Technical Education, Congressman Mark Go, and the members of this committee, the chairperson of the House Committee on Appropriation, Congressman Eric Kiap, and the members of this committee, our benefactor, Honorable Congressman Giorgio Lara. Uh, I'd like also to acknowledge the kindness and the presence of our very own senator in Northern Duzon, Senator Aimee Marcos, who introduced this uh, Senator Bill number 2254. Uh, Mr. Chair, can I present some introduction? Story slides lang po. Yes, please, and I hope it's not too long. <laughs> thank you. No, no, no. no. <laughs> sige, sige ma'am. You thank may you, proceed, sir. please. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, the Iraq extension emanated from the Provincial Board Resolution, and this was acted immediately by our Honorable Congressman, uh, Giorgio Lara. And uh, uh, next slide, please. Next slide. And... Uh, we were able to interview respondents from 11 school, secondary schools in Sulana, Amulung, and Alcala. We had 764 high school students, 501 parents, and 323 teachers and barangay officials. And our findings were the following. Next slide. We have 528 interested students, and this was supported by 501 parents. And also we have other stakeholders like teachers and barangay officials. And uh, from the course preferences, the respondents, uh, from the students, their priority were the following, BS criminology, education, information technology, and agriculture. And I think they have the same preference with the, student, uh, with the parents. And uh, the other stakeholders had Another preference from them, they wanted uh, elementary and secondary education, agriculture, and criminology. So the recommendations then were to offer, next slide please, BS criminology, BS elementary education, BS agriculture, and BS information technology. Erection of a new building due to limited facilities and infrastructure was also recommended. CSU's pool of trained faculty members, will deliver uh, instruction through blended learning modalities, and then local government units and alumni members may help in the delivery of internet connectivity providing servers. So we presented the result to Congressman Lara, and immediately uh, we, next, next, we came up with a board resolution, uh, number 77, series of 2019, 
hereby uh, approving the, the establishment of extension in the Solana campus of uh, as a campus, extension campus of Cagayan State University. Next slide, please. From there, we had a groundbreaking ceremony in February 7 of 2020. And uh, this, where, this was attended by the students, parents, and local government officials. And uh, last school year, we offered these programs based criminology, based elementary education, uh, diploma in agriculture, information technology, as pilot programs that would cater to our Iraga students. Iraga students uh, are coming from uh, several municipalities because the nearest college would be at uh, or in Tugigaraw City. And that's uh, 25 kilometers from Tugigaraw City, but uh, only three public vehicles uh, uh, travel in one day. So, mahirap po yung sasakyan at napaka-remote tong mga barangay sa mga ito, kaya po itong extension. Our programs that we offered, next please, are compliant with the minimum requirements of CHED evidence and certific certificates of program compliance received, as well as AACOB certificates of accreditation. So to update everyone, uh, we have here our perspective, and uh, now uh, we have Congressman Lara. Nagpapasalamat po kami sa inyo at naumpisa na po yung uh, structure in Iraga Extension. And uh, until now, the Honorable Cong Congressman is still coming up with remedies to fund this uh, particular project. And now we have uh, this uh, accomplishment. And we have uh, the proposed manpower uh, requirements for funding in the next two to three years. Uh, we have for uh, the manpower for the first year or year one, 20 million. Uh, year two, 23 million for uh, PS and 25 million for uh, year three. But for the equipment, we need 7 million point. 7.3 million. We have not included any more the MOOE, Your Honor. And for the extension, maraming salamat po at sana uh, mabigyan natin ito ng pagkakataon para sa ganon ay magiging regular campus ng ating Cagayan State University to address the goal, access to quality education, as well as addressing the vision of the Cagayan State University as a university with global structure in the arts, culture, agriculture, and fisheries, the sciences as well as technological and professional fields. Maraming salamat po sa ating mga senador na nandito, si Senador uh, Ralph Recto, Senador Subiri, Senador Angara, at Senador Aimee Marcos, at si Sen Sen Senador Nancy Binay. At uh, taus-puso po kaming nagpapasalamat sa inyo po, mahal naming Chair, uh, Senator Joel Villanueva. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. Thank you, uh, President Alvarado. We would like to hear from Chad uh, uh, in this particular uh, measure, House Bill Number 9179 and Senate Bill Number 2254. Uh, perhaps uh, Attorney Haro uh, give us an update as to uh, the compliance of this uh, particular uh, school with the Chad requirements for the conversion. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Chair, um, the, the things that uh, was mentioned by uh, CSU, Mr. Chair, are existing uh, extension programs. So um, since these are existing um, programs, Mr. Chair, we will support the proposal. Uh, but of course, we take note, for Mr. Chair, that there's, there's a, there should be a corresponding funding uh, because all the requirements for a, a regular campus will be now required for this satellite campus as well, Mr. Chair, such as the um, faculty, the building um, in the one presented by CSU, uh, it's still being built for uh, Mr. Chair. So uh, as long as there will be a corresponding funding um, allocation for it, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you very much, Attorney Haro. Uh, any other comments uh, from our colleagues from House of Representatives? Senator Marcos, Senator Binay, are there any other comments? I think the, uh, it's uh, clear that uh, Chad interposes no objection 
and uh, they are supportive of the measure, but uh, their main concern is the uh, uh, budget uh, for, for, for the coming school year to make sure that uh, funds are available to finance the programs of this uh, uh, measure. Are there any other, other um, comments, dear colleagues? Hearing none, if there are no objections uh, to House Bill number 9179 mm -hmm. in consideration of Senate Bill number, yes? Um, uh, Mr. Chair, yes, Senator Binay, you're the, same, que the same question lang. Um, how much would be the bu budgetary requirements? And I would assume hindi pa to kasama for the 2022 budget. The proposed, yes. Uh, uh, Your Honor, Your Honor. Wala in yeah. sorry. Yes, please, uh, ma'am. You're now you're recognized. Please yeah. proceed. Th thank, thank, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, uh, Your Honor, Ma'am Senator Nancy Binay. Uh, yeah, it's not included in the 2022 yet because it's only the building, ma'am, that has been included. That's why we labeled year one, maybe that will be 2023 already. And the initial funding for manpower will be uh, 25 million for the MOO, uh, for the PS. And we have also around uh, seven point something for the equipment, ma'am, because we need to have a crime laboratory because it's a CHED requirement. And I'd like to thank Attorney Haro for uh, extending her support to, uh, in behalf of CHED to Cagayan State University. Uh, so, President Alvarado, for next yes, year, you don't need an additional budget because you already have the building. Tama po ba? Yes, uh, we have... Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, for 2022, we are... Uh, to we give will, you an update, least... the budget for Cagayan State yeah. University for 2022 is 815,420,000. Just to put that on record. Yes. Please proceed. Yes, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the 869, seven, uh, the one mentioned by our Honorable Chair, uh, Senator Villanueva, is the funding of CSU for 2022. Only the building was uh, part of that, ma'am. But for the manpower requirement, wala pa po. Uh, pero 2023 pa pa naman huyan dahil hindi pa tapos yes, yung building. So yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. ma thank okay. you, ma'am. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, any other uh, comments uh, from our colleagues, Senator Marcos, uh, others? Hearing none, if there are no objections uh, to uh, House Bill number 9179 and in consideration of Senate Bill number 2254, the committee secretariat is hereby directed to prepare the uh, corresponding committee report subject to the amendment submitted and subject to style. So ordered. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Congratulations. Salamat. Uh, Moving forward, we go to House Bill number 7879. This is uh, uh, in consideration also of Senate Bill number 1963, establishing campuses of the University of Eastern Philippines in the municipalities of Allen, Victoria, and Laverezares, Laverezares in Northern Samar. May we uh, recognize now the uh, author of this measure from the House? Representative uh, Paul Daza, my good friend, Congressman Daza, Congressman Paul Daza, you're recognized. If uh, Congressman Daza is not around, uh, we'll uh, uh, recognize the president of uh, University of Eastern Philippines, uh, President uh, Cherry Ultra. Ma'am, you're recognized. Please proceed. Good morning. Sir Joel, good morning po. I can't see. Oh, there. Okay. Yes, good morning po. Recognize. Please proceed, yes. ma'am. Yes po. Uh, uh, this is uh, in connection, sir, with the proposal of our Honorable Congressman Paul R. Daza for the uh, Establishment of a satellite campus uh, situated in the Balaquatro area of the province of Northern Samar. This will be under the uh, umbrella of the University of Eastern Philippines as one of the campuses which will be established in the province of Northern Samar in the district, uh, first district of Northern Samar. Uh, the location will be in the Labisaris uh, Northern Samar. They will be offering courses, uh, teacher education courses, uh, and the criminology courses. 
That's all po, sir. Okay, uh, <laughs> I can barely hear you, ma'am. Sorry. Um, can we just hear uh, from uh, the representative of uh, CHED, Attorney Haro, to, to uh, comment on this uh, particular measure? Ma'am, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On the part of the Commission, uh, we interpose no objection, Mr. Chair, subject to appropriate uh, appropriate funding as uh, we've been mentioning, Mr. Chair, and compliance to our CHED BSGs, Mr. Chair. Okay. No objection. No nothing. Uh, dear colleagues from the Senate, Senator Marcos, Senator Binay, others, so we can uh, fast track the uh, the process. There being no objections to House Bill Number Seven Eight Seven Nine in consideration of Senate Bill Number One Nine Six Three, the Committee Secretary is hereby directed to prepare the corresponding committee report, subject to the amendment submitted and subject to style. So ordered. Thank you. Congratulations, ma'am. We uh, proceed on the next agenda. We will tackle. And uh, take you. up several bills. Yes. Uh, okay. We'll take up several bills on the conversion and establishment of several campuses of the Cebu Technological uh, University or CTU. We have House Bill Number 9075 uh, in consideration of Senate Bill Number 2224, converting CTU. Pinamungahan uh, Extension Campus into a regular campus. House Bill Number 9150 in consideration of Senate Bill Number 2223, converting CTU Balamban Campus into a regular campus. House Bill Number 9180 in consideration of Senate Bill Number 2222, establishing CTU campuses in Asturias and Toledo in Cebu. And House Bill Number 8040, establishment of a CTU Consolation Campus in Consolacion Cebu. We will recognize uh, our, our distinguished colleagues from the House of Representatives. We start off with uh, Congresswoman uh, Emery Juano Dizon. Ma'am, my good friend, uh, good morning po and uh, thank you for being with us. You're recognized, ma'am, for your sponsorship speech. Sorry, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. We can't hear you. You're in a mute mode. Congresswoman. Senator, can you there, hear me? There, there. We can hear you now, ma'am. Okay. We can see and hear you loud and clear. Thank you. Please proceed, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, to our distinguished Senator, um, of course, our Chairman, Senator uh, Joel Villanueva, our uh, President Pro Tempore, Senator Ralph Recto, our Senator Nancy Binay, and Senator Amy Marcos, and to all our colleagues in the House of Representatives, Mayung Buntag, Kinatong Tanan. First of all, I sincerely thank the Chairman, Senator Joel Villanueva, and the members of the Committee on um, Higher higher Technical and educa Vocational Education, as well as the members of the Committee on Ways and Means, and the members of the Committee on and finance. I likewise thank the resource person who are here today uh, for their time and willingness to help. I am honored at the same time, humbled to seek the support of the House Bill number 8040 that intends to integrate the Consolacion Community College in the municipality of Consolacion, Cebu. As a regular campus of the Cebu Technological University or CTU to be known as CTU Consolation Campus. The college has been operating since 2008. Over the years, it has helped thousands of students from struggling families who pursue their dreams. This school year, it has enrolled, uh, enrolled this school year, it has an enrollment of 1,711. There is an increase of 15.30% compared to last year, despite the challenges brought about the current pandemic. As the school continues to grow, there is only so much that the municipality can do. As Consolation is poised to become a city, God willing, in the next few years, and the relocation of the Cebu International Court in its jurisdiction very soon. The state can help Consolation and the neighboring municipali municipalities prepare its human resource and take a comparative advantage. This move to integrate 
as an affiliate campus of the Cebu Technological University couldn't be better as the latter is the number one state university in the region and recognized nationally as one of the leading technological universities in the country. The people of the 6th district of Cebu and the neighboring towns of, will appreciate it very much if this bill is given the chance to become a law. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Congresswoman. Thank you very much for your presence. Um, if we have with us uh, other authors, uh, Representative uh, Pablo Jan Garcia, uh, you're recognized, sir. If he's around. Uh, if not, we will recognize the uh, president of uh, Cebu Technological University, uh, President uh, Rosane A. Ancheta Jr. Uh, good morning, Honorable Chair. And you're there. Okay, Hello. sir. Yes, you're recognized. Uh, we believe that in this uh, particular uh, measure that we are uh, deliberating upon, uh, we have two measures converting uh, uh, the extension campuses into a regular campus, and then there are two estab uh, yes. establishment naman ho, no? so Astoria, Toledo, and uh, Consolacion. Sir, you're yes. recognized, please. Thank you. Yes, Honorable Chair. So, good morning, everyone. Honorable Chair, Sen Senator Joel Villanueva, and to the members of the Senate Committee on Higher Techn Te Technical and Vocational Education. The Cebu Technological University, the second biggest state university in the Philippines, interposes no objection to the proposed bills on the establishment of regular campuses in the municipality and city of Pinamungahan, Toledo, Balamban, Asturias, and Consolacion. As a partner to this undertaking, we re reiterate our su full support to these proposals. The noble and benevolent inten intention of the proposed measures is met with great enthusiasm. Rest assured, we will provide the needed support as we may be required for the fulfillment of the proposed measure. We hope to con contribute towards the achievement of a bright future for the higher education. Thank you very much and God bless you all. Thank you, Honorable Mr. President, uh, President Ancheta. Thank you very much. We'll hear from uh, Chad now. Uh, um, Attorney Haro, our uh, our uh, representative from CHED, ma'am, you're recognized. Yes, Mr. Chair. On the part of the Commission, uh, we take note of the uh, pr provision in the Senate bill, uh, specifically Section 5, that uh, CPU shall ensure minimum requirements of the Commission on higher education for the operation of its campus, including those related to its coverings, are fully complied with. So, uh, because of this provision, Mr. Chair, we are interposing no objection, Mr. Chair. Okay, uh, as Thank long you, as they uh, comply with the uh, requirements uh, being asked by uh, Chad. Right now, uh, for, for 2022 budget, the budget for uh, Cebu Technological University is 1,082,339,000. No? Uh, may I just ask how, how, how much do we need? Uh, Granting we, we, we pass this measure and uh, uh, it becomes a law, uh, do we need additional funding? Uh, I think it's it's important to note that uh, we are establishing two campuses, no? Uh, actually, three, I think, Asturias, Toledo, and the Consolation. How much uh, are we looking at, uh, Mr. President, President Ancheta? Honorable Chair, uh, we have at least uh, five million each for the uh, campus. To establish. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Good chair. Thank you. Kayang kaya na ni Senator Subiri yan. <laughs> anyway, um, are there any other uh, comments? Uh, uh, dear colleagues, Senator Binay, you know, as we are doing this, uh, conducting this hearing, there are two other hearings uh, being conducted here in the Senate. And uh, that's why it's very hard to... Uh, to uh, to get the uh, 
attention of our colleagues uh, every now and then. But anyway, um, if there are no other comments, no objections of the following uh, House and the Senate bills, House Bill Number 9075 in consideration of Senate Bill Number 2224, House Bill Number 9150 in consideration of Senate Bill Number 2223, House Bill Number 9180 in consideration of Senate Bill Number 2222, and House Bill Number 8040. Uh, the Committee Secretariat is hereby directed to prepare the uh, corresponding committee report um, subject to the amendment submitted and subject to style. So ordered. Thank you, Mr. President, President Sieta, Congresswoman uh, Loli Wap. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very, very much, Thank you very much, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda, we will take up several bills on the conversion and establishment of several campuses of the uh, Polytechnic University of the Philippines. We have House Bill Number 9347, converting PUP Alfonso Maragondon Annex Campus into a regular campus. House Bill Number 8131, converting the PUP Cabias Campus in Cabiao, Nueva Ecija as a regular campus. House Bill Number 8985, in consideration of Senate Bill Number 1702, establishing PUP Leyte in uh, Leyte. Uh, uh, House Bill Number 5738, establishing the PUP Santa Rosa Campus in Santa Rosa, Laguna. House Bill Number 5739, in consideration of Senate Bill Number 2013. Establishing PUP Caloocan City, North Campus in Caloocan City. Uh, this juncture will recognize the uh, authors present here with us. Uh, let's uh, start off with the Representative uh, Maricel Natividad Nagano uh, to sponsor House Bill Number 8131. Ma'am, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, good morning, po, uh, Senator Joel Villanueva, and to the other senators who are present here. Uh, Senators Ralph Brock, Recto, Senator Amy Marcos, Senator Subiri, Angara, and Senator Nancy Binay. Also to my colleagues in the House of Representatives and to our uh, resource persons and guests. Um, this representation is pursuing the passage of this bill into law in response to the needs and aspirations of our students from families who belong to the economically challenged level of Society for Accessible Quality and Responsive Education. By recognizing PUP Cabio branch as a regular branch, a higher number of students will be given the opportunity to acquire the requisite university education without the burden of incurring additional expense, expenses that their families cannot afford. Mr. Chair, um, this campus has been in operation since 1996 and um, they have Certificate of Compliance for their uh, courses. And um, may I point out that uh, they have been serving not just the youth of the municipality of Cabiao, but uh, likewise the other municipalities here in the 4th District of Nueva Ecija. So um, we hope and pray that um, through you, Mr. Chair, this uh, committee will uh, pass this bill. Thank, uh, I'd also like to thank uh, Director uh, Estingor of the PUP Cabiao branch who is uh, here with us. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Congresswoman uh, Dr. Maricel Natividad Nagano. I was just in Nueva Ecija a couple of weeks ago. I'm uh, very much aware of this uh, uh, campus, uh, its operation, and uh, I'm in uh, full support of uh, this uh, conversion, uh, uh, of this measure. Um, we would also like to recognize, uh, thank you, ma'am. We would also like to recognize uh, Congressman uh, Along Malapitan, good friend of ours as well. Uh, to sponsor uh, House Bill Number 5739, uh, Congressman uh, Along Malapitan, you're recognized, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and to, the Idol. and to the honorable members of this committee, also to my uh, esteemed colleagues. Uh, Mr. Chair, for the purposes of brevity, may I most respectfully request that the explanatory note of the bill be considered as my uh, sponsorship remark for House Bill Five seven three nine. Thank you. Mr. So ordered. So ordered. Thank you very much, uh, Congressman Along. I know that uh, this is very close to your heart, and uh, we have talked about this: the establishment of PUP Caloocan City North Campus in uh, Caloocan City North. Uh, we'll uh, 
ask other authors if uh, they, they 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 still wanted to uh, to uh, give their sponsorship speech. Uh, Representative uh, Bumble Tolentino and uh, Representative uh, Ching Veloso the third, if uh, they're around. If they're not, let's let's we'll, we'll just uh, in, uh, insert into the records the explanatory notes of uh, the said measures as uh, uh, part of their sponsorship speech, together with uh, House Bill Number Five Seven Three Eight. Uh, authored by my good friend, Congressman Dan Fernandez, who is uh, so busy right now. I don't know what he's doing, <laughs> but uh, I'm sure he's busy attending to the needs of uh, his constituents in Santa Rosa, Laguna. Uh, if there are no other member of the House uh, of Representatives who would like to uh, give their uh, sponsorship speech, we will give the floor to our friends from CHED, our friend from CHED, Attorney Haro, again. <laughs> It's quite uh, there are three house house bills. Uh, I mean five house bills here, uh, ma'am. May we know from Chad if there are any comments uh, uh, in this particular measures, ma'am? Thank you, but thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we would like to put a context in then for Mr. Chair. Actually, Mr. Chair, you sa uh, previously, Mr. Chair, we have um, some comments also as to the creation of. Uh, or additional campuses of PUP. Our reservation uh, before is that um, it might all, it might affect the leveling of the institution. Um, but uh, on the part of the commission for Kabyao, Mr. Chair, we interpose no objection since uh, there is no um, uh, established uh, state near that area, Mr. Chair. Um, so and the program being um uh, being proposed to mr chair has already a compliance on the part of the commission and there is also okay. a provision in the section five of the bill so we are interposing no objection to Kabiao. um same with um, santa rosa mr chair uh santa rosa and the um, marabondon po um as to kaloocan lang po mr chair uh, our based on the information of our regional office, uh, the PUP has not yet submitted documents to our regional office for us to determine the preparedness of the PUP to establish a campus in Kalookan. Uh, also, we gather from uh, our records that there is yet no lot and building in that area, Mr. Chair. So it would take a lot of uh, resources po for the establishment of uh, campus, PUP campus in Kalookan. So you have yet to receive uh, the submission of the documents you are requiring from this uh, particular uh, uh, measure? Uh, for uh, the Kalookan campus, Mr. Chair. What about the one in Leyte? Because it's also establishment of uh, uh, PUP Leyte. Uh, same with later, Mr. Chair, we uh, interpose no objection. So you receive, you have, you have the uh, necessary requirements, I, no? Okay, I, so I, just kalookan, uh, yun yung uh, binabanggit ho ninyo? Uh, but we would like to take note, Mr. Chair, that in later there is uh, Eastern Visayas State University and later Normal University. Okay, but again, you interpose no objection. Just to be yes, clarified. Mr. Chair. Okay, that's in the affirmative. Anyway, uh, we'll give the floor to PUP President uh, Manuel Muhi. Um, I think I think is being represented by uh, the VP of Academic Affairs and the VP for Branches and Campuses, Doctor Pascualito Gortan Gatan, and Doctor yes, Manuel De Guzman. Uh, I don't know who who to recognize. Uh, uh, there are concerns the here, floor. especially uh, with yes, the okay. with the establishment of PUP Kalookan City, because you have yet to submit uh, uh, the requirements being asked from from Chet. Anyway, uh, who do I recognize? Is it VP De Guzman or VP Gatan? I give the floor to to our former president, uh, Doctor De Guzman, Mr. Chet. Okay. We'll uh, give the floor to uh, Dr. Uh, Emmanuel Tokayo de Guzman, VP for Academic Affairs. 
Yes, sir. You're recognized. Um, salamat po. Um, sa mga sa mga kinatawan ng uh, ng mamamayan sa Kongreso at sa Senado, uh, magandang tanghali po sa ating lahat. Uh, saka sa ating mga kasama sa State Universities and Colleges, uh, magandang tanghali din sa inyo. Um, yun po ang pag-convert uh, ng, uh, ng isang locally uh, funded uh, campus uh, para maging uh, nationally funded na uh, na campus ay uh, nangyari na po sa tatlo naming uh, campuses before. Um, kaya lang hindi ganoon ka sabihin na nating suabe ang transformasyon sapagkat uh, yung pong tatlong campus na binabanggit ko na nauna nang naging uh, pambansang uh, pinopondohan ng, ng national budget ay uh, yung nasa sablayan sa Bansud sa Mindoro saka sa San Juan. Uh, ito po ang 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 conversion po nito ay uh, inaprubahan noong uh, 2018 nung nakaraang kongreso pa. Uh, hanggang sa ngayon po ay uh, wala pa kaming natatanggap na pondo para simulan ng operasyon bilang uh, uh, bilang lehitimong uh, campus ng uh, ng PUP. At uh, naging problema po namin yung naging outcome ng ng eleksyon noong 2019 sapagkat uh, nagpalit ng uh, ng uh, local executive yung uh, yung lugar um, at uh, yung sa San Juan po ay ayaw nilang uh, i-donate yung property sa sa PUP na isa sa mga conditions para mapondohan ng uh, ng DBM uh, kaya nakabitin po ngayon ang mga Operasyon noon dahil uh, kaakibat nito ay uh, gusto na rin nilang bitiwan ang pagpupondo sa operasyon dahil meron na nga pong batas. Uh, ganon din ang nangyari sa, hindi naman ganon ang nangyari sa sablayan pero uh, meron din itong, uh, naapektuhan din ito ng outcome nung, uh, nung halala ng 2019 dahil nagbago din ang mayor. Uh, ayaw naman ng bigyan ng pondo ng mayor ang uh, ang sablayan habang naghihintay naman kami ng budget mula sa DBM um, kami ay uh, nagdedesisyon na yung nasa ganitong estado status ng uh, ng mga kinonvert na mga campuses pap, ay uh, pipilitan kaming isara ang uh, ang mga campuses na ito so balinto na po ang nangyari sa halip na maging stable ang uh, ang mga campuses na ito ay uh, naging threat pa ng extinction yung uh, pag uh, pagkakaroon ng batas dahil hindi ito pinopondohan ng DBM at uh, uma umaatras na sa responsibilidad ang mga mga administrasyon na bagong luklok ng nakaraang uh, nakaraang halalan. Ganyan din ang nangyari sa amin sa 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 Bansud. Kaya um Siguro dahil nauna na kami sa proseso ng ganito ay para matulungan na rin namin ng karanasan namin yung ibang mga state universities and colleges na nagpapa-convert din ng kanilang mga campuses. Um, na sana ay uh, uh, higpitan natin ang uh, pag, pagbabantay doon sa pagbabudget sa mga kinukonvert na ito dahil Uh, paradoxical ang effect nito sa ating mga campuses sa halip na maging permanente uh, ay nagiging magiging daan ito ng ng possible na pagsasara ng uh, ng mga campuses na yan dahil walang magpopondo pero natutuwa kami at uh, maraming mga uh, mga pinuno sa ating lipunan ang gustong mag uh, maglagay ng PUP sa kanilang mga lugar siguro dahil uh, nakikita nila yung uh, status ng university na isa sa nangungunang mga universidad sa sa buong Pilipinas sa pribado man o sa pampubliko uh, hindi lamang sa mga SOOCs. Um, kaya hindi naman kami tumututol doon sa pagko-convert uh, ng uh, ng mga nabanggit na mga campuses katulad ng Santa Rosa, katulad ng uh, ng Cabiao um, at yung iba pang uh, kasalukuyang uh, pinag-uusapan ngayon. Um, hinihiling lang namin na 
sana ay uh, pagkatapos ng ng eleksyon na darating ay maging uh, vigilant ang mga sponsor nito at uh, wag nilang uh, titigilan ang pag uh, ang ngulit sa sa DBM at saka uh, siguruhin lamang na ang uh, ang mga property, ang lupa at ang mga building ay idudonate sa sangalan ng PUP dahil imposibleng mabudgetan yan kapag hindi yan idinonate. Condition of possibility ng budgeting yun, yung, uh, yung uh, donation. Um, yun pong um, pagtatayo ng bagong uh, uh, campus ng PUP, alimbawa yung pinag-uusapan ngayon sa Leyte saka sa Kaloocan uh, unahin po natin yung Kaloocan um, nung ako pa po ang pangulo ng PUP uh, siguro mga bandang uh, 2017 pa ito o 2016 sa pangalawang uh, termino ko ay pinag-usapan na rin yan ng Kongreso um, kaya lang uh, malinaw na kailangan munang magkaroon ng isang lugar na may mga pasilidad at may siguradong budget bago ito, uh, I think, payagan at uh, naglagay ng campus doon sapagkat napapariwara yung, uh, yung kalidad ng university kapag uh, basta-basta na lang nagtayo sa isang, uh, sa isang lugar nang walang karampatang uh, Uh, mga pasilidad at uh, mga pangangailangan dalimbawa ang uh, ang pagbabayad sa mga guro ng PS ng MOOE um, ng uh, capital outlay at uh, siyempre yung uh, sinasabi ko na dapat idudonate ito um, na ayon doon sa sa stature ng university um, na hindi uh, na isa sa mga nangungunang uh, Uh, universidad sa sa Pilipinas uh, yung sa Leyte um, kung magagawa nila yung uh, yung mga requirements na yon katulad ng nabanggit ng CED ay uh, kami po ay uh, hindi tututol kaya lang may mga pasubali dahil meron na nga po kaming karanasan dyan at uh, ito ang naging uh, paraan o dahilan ng CED para ibaba yung uh, yung uh, so-called na na sook leveling um, na nakaapekto uh, sa hindi naman po sa kalidad ng edukasyon sa PUP kung hindi sa imahe ng PUP. Um meron po po kaming isang karanasan o dalawang karanasan pala uh, katulad naman ito nung uh, Nung pinag-uusapan ngayon na gagawing uh, pambansang uh, um, uh, universidad sa Inhenyeria, ang uh, Batangas State University dahil uh, mayroon po kaming batas na naipasa na ng Senado at ng Kongreso uh, noong 2019. Um, pero ito po ay uh, inabol ng ilang individual sa hanggang sa, sa palasyo upang i-veto ni uh, President Duterte. Ganon din po ang nangyari sa bill uh, para gawing uh, lehitimong campus ang uh, Kalawan. Nasa Malacanang na po para sa signature, meron din pong humabol um, at vinito din po ng President. At ginamit na dahilan yung uh, sook leveling down namin. Ang ibig mo sabihin ay uh, hindi lamang sa pag sponsor ng batas uh, nakakamit ng isang state university um, yung uh, uh, pag-unlad. Uh, pwede rin itong maging uh, dahilan ng pag, uh, pagkawala, alimbawa ng campus, o pag uh, uh, magiging dahilan ng pagbaba ng, uh, ng tingin ng, uh, ng mga tao sa sa isang state university. Lalo na kung hindi ito tinutulungan ng mga institusyon na dapat ay tumutulong sa kanila. Uh, so yun po ang aming mga pasubali sa lahat ng uh, 
Masubali po na hindi tumututol. Ang ibig sabihin ay... Uh, yes. Hindi. Pero uh, ilagay yung mga kondisyon at siguruhin na ito ay matutupad para hindi ito mapabilang doon sa napakaraming unfunded laws na nandyan sa, uh, sa ating legislatura. At uh, hindi naman na ipapatupad ang mga batas na yan dahil wala ngang pondo. Uh, yun lamang po. Maraming salamat sa inyo. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Emmanuel de Guzman, our Vice President for Academic Affairs. I share your sentiment, sir. Um, we have been passing laws uh, for quite a long time. I was a member of uh, the 12th, 13th, and 14th Congress in the House of Representatives, and this is my uh, uh, fifth, sixth year here in the Senate. And uh, most of the time, even if we pass laws here that we actually scrutinize and everything, uh, but at the end of the day, it boils, it boils down to the uh, availability of funds. Um, you made mention about uh, not objecting to, to these measures at hand. Uh, there are uh, five measures here. But, but, but you're, you're, you're quite um, um, passionate about, about, uh, about there seems to be a, a, a problem in... Um, converting establishment uh, of uh, campuses uh, with regard to the standards because uh, other than that other than the uh, other than the uh, the funding that you are talking about are there any other issues that we would like to uh, to uh, to talk about for example when we establish additional campuses is there a um, a joint coordination or joint planning with the other SUCs in the area to rationalize degree offerings and to ensure that there are uh, no duplication of program offerings. Uh, this is also a question I'd like to pose uh, and uh, address to uh, our CHED representative uh, in this particular matter. Uh, VP De Guzman? Uh, Opo. Um, actually, sir, uh, you, are, you are right. Uh, it is the lookout of CHED uh, to, to see the environment of uh, the academic environment of a uh, of a, a campus um, of a um, of a state university that's going to be established in an area. Uh, meron nga pong duplication. Meron ding uh, katulad po ng PUP kapag ang PUP ay uh, pumunta sa isang lugar na na mayroong uh, state university din doon o kaya ay mayroong private dahil pati po ang enrollment ng private ay naapektuhan ng pagkakaroon ng PUP dahil uh, sina iniisip ng mga estudyante na katumbas na halos ng edukasyon sa privado ang pag-aaral sa PUP. Natitreten din po sila uh, katulad ng ang JRU ay natitreten sa enrollment sa PUP namin sa Santa Mesa saka sa mga karating na, uh, na lugar. Um, pero yun po ay uh, sa palagay ko sa although this is the look out of Ched um, sa dami ng mga mga estudyante dapat nating bigyan ng, uh, ng may kalidad na edukasyon ay as many state universities as possible as that can be funded by the state to uh, um to have all these students uh, avail of uh, the opportunity for um, higher education. Hindi po siguro yun masama. Um, at uh, depende na lamang po ito dun sa siyempre, competitiveness ng mga, mga state universities and, uh, and, and colleges. Um, marami pong hindi nakakapag-aral sa, dito sa gitnang Luzon. Nandito po ako ngayon sa kasalukuyan eh. Um, dahil kakaunti ang state universities and colleges. So, I think walang problema kung magkakaroon ng, ng branch na, na funded na nationally ang, uh, ang PUP dito. Katulad ng meron kami sa Kabyaw. Um, kahit na meron pang ulitan ng kurso o ng programa. Dahil ang market ng mga mag-aaral ay parami ng parami. At uh, siyempre ang edukasyon ay uh, isang karapatan. Uh, 
uh, ng mga kabataan na dapat nating uh, siyempre uh, palaging iniisip na uh, igawad sa kanila yung karapatan na yan. Um, but the quality is the lookout of Ched and uh, Ched of course is uh, doing his job of uh, scanning the, uh, the environment of, uh, of this uh, this is state universities and colleges or in these places where there are more, there are a lot of uh, um, SUCs. Salamat po. Sige, salamat po. Uh, we would like to hear from Ched. Uh, I think no, it, it's, it's good that we can open uh, colleges, universities, uh, expand these campuses, establish new ones. But uh, siyempre, importante rin ho dito yung uh, standards. No, I think that's... Uh, one, if not the most important uh, thing that we should uh, look out for. Uh, tama yung uh, tinuturo, maayos, at yung gagraduate ay uh, talagang na-prepare natin sa labor force, sa ating uh, uh, gustong mangyari. Uh, Ma'am, uh, Attorney Haro, you, would you like to uh, uh, comment on that? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, actually, Mr. Chair, that is what... You're, you're muted, ma'am. Sorry, you're on a mute mode. Can we... uh, thank yeah, you, Mr. There. Chair. We can hear you now. Please proceed. Uh, actually, Mr. Chair, that is one of the considerations. When we asserted or when we determined the preparedness of a an institution, a high school or a college for the establishment of a regular campus, uh, that we also we take into consideration the HEIs in the area, also the feeder programs, uh, who will be the enrollees if there are existing programs in the area so that the resources that will be needed won't be substantial already. Uh, that is why we have raised our um, concern with respect to Kaloocan. In, in this juncture, Mr. Chair, I, I would apologize kasi tinanong niyo ako yung salite uh, and I said uh, we interpose no objections. Yung salite po pala, Mr. Chair, based on our records, we are still uh, yet to de determine also the preparedness of uh, the campus in Leyte. We have uh, determined the preparedness of uh, the campuses in Santa Rosa, Maragundon, and Cambiao because th these are existing programs, Mr. Chair. Uh, in my manifestation also po, I manifested that it is uh, per caution uh, sa, uh, uh, sa, sa PUP that of course um, if there will be if they will be establishing several campuses, uh, yun, yun lang po, the SUC le leveling might be affected because we are taking a look at all the campuses and making sure the quality assurance of all these campuses. So, kung hindi po ready, kung hindi pa talaga uh, ready in terms of uh, the, uh, the facilities, faculty, this will really affect their uh, leveling, Mr. Chair. Okay, uh, that's clear. No, you you made mention about the three uh, campuses, except Leyte and Caloocan. May we find out what what specific uh, requirements you are looking uh, for in these two campuses? Uh, Mister Chair, yung sa Caloocan, wala pa daw pong lot. Ito. Wala pa pong existing po talaga ito, yung sa Caloocan. Let's, let's, uh, let's hear from uh, Congressman uh, Along Malapitan. Yes, sir, Mr. you recognize, sir, please. Yes, Mr. Chen. No? Uh, as of the land for uh, Caloocan, I'd like to inform this uh, committee that the local government is already segregating piece of land for the purpose. So, ito po yung, na, ano, na meron na po kaming uh, lugar dito. It is in Barangay 168. Rainbow uh, Village. Okay, so if if it will uh, suffice the requirements of uh, Ched uh, sa Kaloocan, well, subject to their uh, uh, submission of these uh, requirements, you're 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 asking for, ma'am. Uh, can we uh, proceed uh, with the uh, establishment, or there there are other requirements that you are looking? At? looking for Mr. Chair yung usual po the faculty require the faculty rin po uh, uh, and all the faculty rin po and the use of facilities po dun sa late eh ma'am ano po yung sa late yung hinahanap nyo po um, sa late po Mr. Chair um, 
I'm reaching out to our regional director, eh, pero mukhang hindi pa rin po yata nila ito na visit Mr. Chair. So, as of now po, we have no uh, information pa po, Mr. Chair. Eh. I, I apologize for that po. Anyway, we, we, we will, uh, if there are any uh, other uh, concerns, or if there are any objections to this uh, particular uh, measures at hand, well, yung three, wala na tayong problema. Ano? Yung dalawa, maybe we can uh, 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 sit down and uh, ask the committee secretariat uh, together with Ched and our uh, uh, resource persons here. Uh, subject to the uh, uh, submission of the requirements being uh, uh, asked by uh, the Commission on Higher Education, we will uh, we will uh, uh, proceed. We will uh, uh, call for the TWG to to look into this and uh, so that we can uh, we can uh, proceed with other measures because we have a lot of measures at hand. Uh, if that's okay, dear colleagues, uh, from my colleagues here in the Senate, if there are no objections, we will uh, ask our uh, secretariat to uh, prepare the corresponding committee reports, especially of the three, na walang objection, tapos yung dalawa, upuan uh, natin, and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Congressman uh, Along, Congresswoman uh, uh, Maricel, thank you. Salamat po. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chair, Senator. Thank you. Um, last on our agenda, we'll take up several bills in the creation of CHED provincial offices. Um, we have House Bill number 4957, 4958-6974-7017-7018-7447-7516-7695, House Bill number 7969-8446-8453-8656, and uh, 9342. Lahat po ito ay establishment of uh, CHED Provincial Offices. In Zamboanga, Sibugay, Negros Occidental, Ilocos Sur, Misamis Occidental, Ilocos Norte, Davao Oriental, Sorsogon, Bohol, Northern Samar, Bataan, Kalinga, Mountain Province, and Occidental uh, Mindoro. We'll give the floor to our uh, counterparts from the House of Representatives. We have uh, Representative uh, Ann Hofer, our good friend, is here with us. Hi, ma'am. You're recognized, ma'am? Congresswoman. Congresswoman Ann. I'm trying to unmute. There, there. Hello. 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 Can you, can you, you hear, you your hear your voice? Okay. okay. Thank you very much. You have the floor, ma'am. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, Senator Joel Villanueva. And may I also thank you for sharing your dollet to pad allocation with my constituents. Malaking tulong po. Thank you very much. And thank good you. afternoon thank to all the esteemed senator members of this committee, uh, President Senate Pro Tempore Ralph Recto, Senator Aimee Marcos, Senator Nancy Binay, Senator Migs Zubiri. Um, good afternoon. And to all my colleagues from the House of Representatives, and to all guests present. It is an honor to speak before you today on the importance of passing this bill, which seeks to establish a provincial office of the Commission on Higher Education, or CHED, in the province of Sambuanga, Sibugan. Allow me to adopt the explanatory note of my sponsorship speech, uh, as my sponsorship speech. Um, furthermore, May I state that the passage of Republic Act Number 10931, or the Universal Access to Quality Tertiary Education Act in 2017, of which I and the Honorable Chair, our principal authors, contributed to the increase in transactions with CHED, as it is the primary implementing arm of this landmark law. With its passage, followed an increase in applications for student financial assistance and grants, including the, the availment of the tertiary education subsidy. Thus, the establishment of a CHED provincial office in Sambuanga, Sibugay, 
will address the issue of accessibility. For these reasons, the passage of this bill is earnestly sought. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much, you very uh, much uh, Congresswoman, Congresswoman Ann Hopper, our, uh, our uh, colleague. We thank, thank you for, thank you for uh, being, with uh, us. being with us. We would like to, would uh, like to uh, uh, also uh, 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 some of the authors. Some of I the authors. Hear myself, I can hear myself uh, echoing uh, here uh, in the, the, the session. Uh, session. <laughs> Anyway, uh, anyway we'll, we'll, uh, give we'll, we'll give the floor to go, go. I, I saw him. I, I saw him. Kong DV. Kong DV. Uh, uh, I thank you very much. Thank you, Chair, ma'am. Uh, yes, yes. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Senator Aimee. Senator Aimee. Yung leader na nons. Pakisabi na lang ko. Pakisabi na lang ko. Senator Bongo. Senator Bongo. I would like to ask Senator Binay. Senator Binay. Senator Sunny. And to my colleagues, uh, good after, uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chair. Please allow me to uh, to uh, adapt the the explanatory note as my uh, sponsorship para po uh, mas madali na po tayo. And Mr. Chair, uh, since uh, nakalagay kasi dito vegan city, uh, pwede po bang gawin natin na metro vegan? Because in the town of San Ildefonso, which is part of metro vegan. Nandun po yung government center natin. So may lupa na po doon. And sa vegan, uh, since mahal po yung mga lupa doon, para baka maano tayo, ma mahirapan. So uh, pwede po ba yun? Okay, of course, uh, sir. We we we, uh, we are here to deliberate on this measure and uh, uh, your wish is also our wish. So we'll uh, place Metro Vegan in this uh, particular uh, measure and uh, your... Uh, uh, the explanatory note of the the house bill will be inserted into the records as part of your sponsorship speech. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for sa ati lahat. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we'd also like to spread into the records. Uh, we, we have with us a while ago, Congressman uh, Jay Goti of uh, Misamis Occidental, but he's now on his way here. He's in a uh, flight to Manila, and uh, we will just... Uh, also insert into the records the uh, manifestation speech uh, of Congressman uh, Jeguti. Uh, so ordered, Secretariat. Thank you. Um, we also have with us uh, Representative Angelo Barba. Uh, yes, uh, Congressman Barba, you're recognized, sir. Thank you, thank you, yes. Mr. Chairman, Senator Jovelin Meva, and uh, likewise, a good afternoon to the members of uh, the committee. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this bill, House Bill Number 7018, seeks to establish a CHED field office in the province of Ilocos Norte to provide students and their parents easy access to programs and services of CHED. This would help provide a more efficient and effective program and service delivery, particularly in following up applications for student financial assistance and grants, scholarships, securing eligibility and documents for educational concerns. Establishing a field office devoted to the needs of the students and parents would certainly save time and resources. And this is in line with the administration's policy to provide efficient public service for our people. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Thank you very much, uh, Congressman uh, Angelo Barba. Maraming salamat po. And uh, thank you for uh, being with us this uh, afternoon. We also have with us Congressman uh, Maximo Dalog. Uh, sir, you're recognized. Good afternoon. Yeah. Good afternoon, Senator Joel Villanueva. Congressman Maxi is um, in a uh, place where there is no signal, so he assigned me, uh, the Chief of Staff, uh, Attorney Cyprin Maxel Waidado, to read his sponsorship speech. 
and uh, he would like to extend also his gratitude for uh, for your um, for your allocation of Dole Tupad. So to the other members of this committee, Senator Ralph Recto, Senator Nancy Binay, Senator Zubiri, and Senator Angara, and to the and to our uh, to the guests of the Co Commission on Higher Education. House Bill 8656 seeks to establish a provincial office of the Commission on Higher Education in the province of Mountain Province to be known as the Commission on Higher Education Mountain Province Provincial Office. The establishment of a CHED provincial office in the province of Mountain Province will facilitate the coordination of the Mountain Province State Polytechnic College, the Lone State College in the province, Saigen Institute of Technology, a privately owned college, and several other technical and vocational institutions in the college, in the province. In addition, it will make the services of CHED accessible to the students and to these higher education institutions, considering that the capital town of Bontoc Mountain Province is about 140 kilometers more or less away from the CHED regional office located at the BSU compound, La Trinidad Benguet. And in view of the foregoing, approval of the bill is earnestly sought. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, representing Congressman uh, Maximo Dalog. Uh, are there any other uh, uh, members of the House uh, present here today who would like to uh, uh, give their sponsorship speech? Uh, because... Uh, we, we barely see uh, the entire screen here at the session hall. Um, anyway, if there's none, we we will uh, acknowledge our uh, executive director from CHED, Attorney uh, Haro, to uh, give uh, her comments in this uh, particular, I mean, in these measures at hand, uh, perhaps I would also like to uh, put on record, ma'am, that uh, we are about to start the uh, the technical working group on the uh, CHED charter, and so we wanted to find out how how, how these measures would uh, uh, would be integrated. Ano yung mga yare, uh, uh, ma'am? Uh, please, we'll, we'll we'll hear from you, Attorney Haro. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, actually, Mr. Chair, uh, our chair has already um, submitted our position on this. Um, in principle, we interpose no objection to the creation of provincial office, offices as proposed by the subject measures. Um, but we recommend that the creation of CHED provincial offices in the 12 provinces as uh, proposed in the subject legislative measures be incorporated in the pending CH, uh, CHED bill or an act strengthening the Commission on Higher Education. Um, as you've manifested, Mr. Chair, this is uh, due for the technical working group uh, discussion uh, again. Um, we take note or we recognize, Mr. Chair, uh, that incorporating the mandates uh, in this subject measures to the pending bill shall ensure a, a more consistent and comprehensive higher education regulatory and developmental legislation and framework leading to further enhancing the services of CHED to our people. Uh, yung question niyo po, Mr. Chair, na how can that be integrated in our uh, CHED bill? In our CHED bill, there is a provision that uh, the CHED may create uh, provincial offices um, as may be warranted. Pero yung specific po siguro na ito, Mr. Chair, yung mga areas po na ito na identify, pwede po siguro ito na yung um, uh, mailagay na rin po doon explicitly in our CHED bill. And then, uh, but there is still a provision uh, that the CHED may retain, uh, has the authority uh, to, uh, to determine also what are the areas which will still need provincial offices, Mr. Chair. Okay, I think that's, that's, that's clear. So this will be integrated and in no way will affect the, uh, the, the, the new CHED charter that we have uh, been discussing for the past couple of months. Uh, is that correct, Your Honor? Yes, Mr. Chair. The answer is yes, because we didn't hear you, ma'am. <laughs> You're in mute, Kanina. The answer is in the affirmative. Is that correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. And then uh, uh, what we will do is that we prioritize these 12 measures and then um, 
uh, yung ibang mga lugar, probinsya na wala, yun yung mga susunod. Uh, just to be clear with that. Is that correct, uh, Your Honor, uh, Attorney Haro? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, because this would prove to be, as 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 uh, mentioned by uh, Chair Popo, would be more prudent, uh, official, and uh, uh, pragmatic approach. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any other uh, um, comments uh, from my uh, colleagues here in the Senate? Um, kung wala na po, I will, uh, I will uh, direct the uh, committee secretariat to uh, prepare the corresponding committee reports um, subject to the amendment submitted and subject to style in case, again, there are uh, grammatical errors or typographical errors. So ordered. Thank you. And uh, maraming salamat sa ating mga kasamahan sa Kamara. Congressman thank you, thank uh, you, Marco. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Congresswoman Ann, Congressman DV, marami pong salamat. Thank you very much. Appreciate your presence here today. Thank uh, you, Senator Joel. Salamat din po. Thank you, thank you, uh, President here. So before we adjourn, uh, I have a request here to, to tackle and go back to House Bill 7841 because uh, just uh, for the sake of consistency in some other measures na may reservations ang uh, CHED ay... Uh, Binanggit natin that we can um, uh, call for a TWG and uh, iron out itong mga differences. No? So uh, if we can go back uh, to, to, to the discussions in uh, how, with, with House Bill number 7841, we still have with us President Apas, no? Sir, President Apas, you're still there. Uh, may, may, may we know if the compliance with CHED requirements uh, for the conversion of... Uh, uh, kasi parang it appears that it's still ongoing, hindi pa tapos. No? Yun yung binabanggit ng, ng, ng CHED. Nasang stage na ho ba kayo? Are, are you aware of this, uh, sir? Uh, sir, complete na ang submission namin doon, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can I ask uh, my, the representative of the Congressman Chow, si Sir Arnold uh, uh, Garbanzos, uh, to speak? In behalf of the congressman. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, sure. If that would uh, give us, uh, would help us uh, clarify all these issues, because uh, uh, Chad's uh, statement, a strong statement a while ago, na hindi pa ho at uh, mabigat ho yung mga binabanggit po nila. That's that's why we wanted to talk about it. Anyway, yeah, we can recognize. Sino po yung gusto nyo recognize from the office of Congressman Chow? Yes po, yes po. Sige po, uh, uh, sino man po siya. Mr. Mr. Chair, magandang umaga po. I am Arnold Garbanzos po. Yes, Isa sir. po ni Congressman Shaw dito sa Iligan. No? Yes, please. Actually, kanina po, hindi lang po na-mention ni Dr. Apas na ito pong buruon is actually a border parangay to the municipality of Linamon. Ito po kasi yung Linamon ngayon, Mr. Senator, mayroon pong ongoing na special economic zone. It's called the Metro Iligan Regional Agricultural Industrial Center, uh, which will be projected to have at least 300 locators po. It's a project po ng mga Dimapuros. So, kasi border, border po yung buruon sa kayong Linamon. Ang ginagawa po ni Congressman Schauser is Hinuhuli niya po yung market no, ng special economic zone where most of it will be trained by the Iligan Polytechnic State College po. Okay? So basically, minimension po ni Dr. Apas po kanina, Sir Joel, na yung mga municipality like Oswagan, dyan magagaling po yung mga workers, no? Oswagan, Linamon, Bacolod, Maigo, Lano del Norte. Uh, yan po talaga ang specialized. Then other than that, Sir Joel, ang gusto po nila na mag-expand po yung uh, technology base ng school. Hindi lang po fisheries. Gusto po nila dagdagan ng mga technical skills which are needed for the special economic zone. No? So basically, yun po talaga ang purpose uh, of why we are trying to push for this uh, Iligan Polytechnic State College, which we have been doing since the 14th Congress pa po, no? Since the 14th Congress. 
Uh, anyway, yun lang po ang basically ang gist or entire idea why we need the Iligan Polytechnic State College in our area. Of course, yung sa Kolehiyo de Iligan, it's still ongoing pa naman yung po yung application nila. Tapos yung MSUIT naman po, they cannot absorb all the students applying kasi it's all over Mindanao and even Visayas. So adding an additional Polytechnic State College in the area, sir, which I have also explained to the regional director in Region 10, is a, is a must for our area. But uh, we will we will defer to your suggestion, saka kay Atty. Haru po, na if there is an additional requirement that you might need, we will wait for the requirement po from CHED Region 10 so that we will be able to accomplish that additional report po. Yun lang po, Mr. Chair. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, sir. No, And we appreciate your... Uh... Your inputs here. We were looking at the uh, the uh, the bill itself in section six, and uh, perhaps one question that we would like to raise is that are there any uh, plans to absorb uh, non-chartered tertiary institutions in the Del Norte region then as branches uh, uh, and extension centers? Because ito yung nakalagay sa sa section six, no? Uh, parang is that the original plan or? Kasi kung mangyayari po ito, this needs to be legislated. Uh, to follow po ba yun? Ano yung, uh, ano yung ating uh, intention po dito, sir? Uh, I will defer that question, sir, to the good congressman, Shao, sir. Sabihin ko lang po sa kanya. We I'm sorry, will, we're, we're losing you, uh, sir, 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 sir Arnold. Okay. Sorry, we're, we're losing Regarding you. Regarding section 6, sir, no? Eh, mahina. Sayin ko po muna yung video ko, sir, para lumakas yan. Yan po, sir, mali malinaw na. Yes, yes. Hello. Can hear you, please. Oh yes, sir. So we will, we will. I will defer that question, sir, to Congressman Shaw, sir. Okay. Uh, sige ho. Uh, can can we hear from Chad, uh, ma'am? Uh, Attorney Haro, uh, still with us? Yes, Mr. Chair. About. Um, Mr. Chair, kasi based on the initial assessment of our regional director. Uh, yun nga po, as I have manifested, there are existing AGIs, uh, MSUIIT, one new LUC. Uh, actually, on the agriculture programs, um, it could also be catered by other uh, SUCs such as MSU Nawaan, MSU Marawi, or CMU or USTP, Mr. Chair. Yung sinabi po ni Sir Arnold na um, yung the enrollee, uh, I mean the proposed enrollees will be coming from this area. Um, yun po siguro yung kailangan... That is why we are also requiring setting submission of feasibility study for us to determine uh, the viability or the preparedness of this institution, Mr. Chair. Eh. Sige po, uh, just to be fair with them and uh, uh, as, as far as this uh, representation is concerned, uh, for consistency, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, form a TWG and uh, I will give you my word uh, uh, for, 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 for our friends uh, in CHED na na unless ma comply itong mga pinapasubmit po ninyo we will not uh, uh, move forward so that would be uh, our uh, decision uh, with the permission of my colleagues uh, present here today uh, if there are no objections hearing none uh, so we'll uh, call for a TWG and uh, ask that uh, the concerned um, uh, uh, school headed by uh, President Apas submit to the submit to this uh, committee the uh, requirements being asked by the Commission on Higher Education. So is that clear, sir? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. And, Chair. Uh, we will coordinate also with the Congressman uh, Shaw's office. Thank you. Uh, we will uh, proceed. Uh, okay, no. Okay, uh, thank you very much uh, again. No? And uh, we are extremely grateful that we have, uh, that we had a very fruitful and uh, eventful discussions on the 28 bills and the uh, Senate bills uh, here today. Maraming maraming salamat po sa ating uh, mga resource persons. Kay Attorney Cinderella Haro ng CHED, ikaw yung uh, suki namin ngayon. At uh, maraming salamat for your uh, uh, insights. At uh, sa mga kasamahan po natin sa Senado, Senator Amy Marcos, Senator Binay, Senator Ralph Recto, thank you so much for joining us. Sa uh, Kamara de Representantes, sa mga representatives na 
nakasama ho natin. Maraming salamat po sa walang pagod na nagsusulong ng mga panukalang batas na ito upang lalong mapabuti ang kalagayan ng kalikalidad ng ating edukasyon sa ating minamahal na bansa. Maraming salamat po sa pagbibigay ninyo ng oras at aktibong partisipasyon ngayong umaga. We look forward to finalizing the following measures, the revision of the charters of Batangas State University and the Tarlac State University, establishment of uh, physical campuses of various colleges, conversion of campuses into regular campuses, and of course, the establishment of CHED provincial offices. Sa gitna po ng uh, pandemya, kailangan pong siguruhin na handa ang ating mga paaralan para sa new normal. And as your chairperson of the Senate Committee, on higher and technical vocational education, we will work harder to ensure that we achieve our goal of improving access to quality education for all. Palapit na po at malapit na ang uh, discussion ng ating national budget and uh, we will of course be sitting there and uh, uh, do our part in ensuring that uh, we'll be able to offer quality uh, tertiary education to our people. Ang punot dulo po ng ating mga panukalang batas na tinalakay ngayong araw na ito ay ang maging abot kamay ng ating mga kabataan, ang kalidad na edukasyon na magiging pundasyon at haligi nila tungo sa masayang pagbabago at magandang kinabukasan. Muli po sa inyong lahat, maraming maraming salamat and may God bless us all. Thank you. This uh, committee uh, hearing is hereby adjourned. Thank you again. God bless us all.